I have a bunch of film scanners. All right, wait, hold on. I have an Epson V500. I have a Nikon Super Cool Scan 4000 ED. I don't even know what that ED means. I have a PlusTech Optic Film 7600i. I even have this cheap CCD thing that has carriers for slides and strips of 35 millimeter film. I don't recommend these to anybody, but that's a discussion for another day. Now, here's the problem. I don't use any of them. And here's why. The Pixelator is a super simple device made out of injection molded plastic that holds your film flat and it has a diffuser underneath that allows a light source to come through so you can digitize your film using a smartphone or a digital camera. You can configure these gates to scan different formats of film. For example, right now it's configured to scan 35mm and you can remove these gates so you can scan medium format or 4x5. So I spent a few minutes chatting with Hamish Gill, who invented the Pixelator, and if you don't know who Hamish is, then you most likely have spent time on his website, 35mmc.com. So I talked to him about his idea, how it came about, and how it came to market, how he developed it, and how he eventually brought it to market using Kickstarter. So let's see what he had to say. The original idea was I bought this Harman pinhole camera. It's a 5x4, 4x5. Uh, pinhole camera I took my first photos with it I developed them and then I got these negatives and I had basically no idea what to do with them because I didn't have a scanner uh, I couldn't afford to spend 750 quid on a you know on an Epson large format scanner and at the time there was no film holders basically no film holders on the market the only way you could do it was to buy an old enlarger film holder and sort of fudge that onto some sort of light source but there wasn't a, just a dedicated low cost and that was the key for me dedicated low-cost film holder for putting on some sort of backlight and then photographing. The other scanners are perfectly capable machines. The Epson scans 12 frames at a time. The PlusTech can output huge files with crazy amounts of optical resolution and dynamic range. The Nikon I never use because it uses Firewire and I'd have to get some legacy hardware to even be able to use it. The idea originally was to keep it as, as simple as possible and just make it out of laser cut acrylic mm -hmm. sheet um, because it's a very low cost, uh, acrylic sheet is very low cost material. Laser cutting is a fairly low cost manufacturing process. I launched it on Kickstarter uh, with a target of £9,840, if I remember rightly, and it raised 60 something thousand, 60 a big number and and, and and then essentially generated something in the order of 1500 orders which was significantly more than I sort of anticipated and and I kind of looked at this laser cut acrylic product in the context of that and just thought this isn't good enough it's 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 a good product but it's not good enough for 1500 people a lot of us have been there we get a shiny new scanner, we get it all set up, we have the best intentions to scan all our film, 2 a.m. rolls around, and we've only scanned three rolls out of the dozens we intend to scan. And then we quit doing it. We put it off, and eventually we decide, you know what, I'm not going to scan my film because it's a pain. Well, the Pixelator has solved that for me. I now have an always set up station with a copy stand, and you don't even need a copy stand. You could start out with a tripod, but I do recommend getting a copy stand. They're pretty cheap nowadays. And I can get through digitizing a whole roll of 36 frames of 35 millimeter film in under five minutes. Now there's a downside to that. There's space. I have a corner in my office where my copy stand and camera is always set up with a light table. If you don't have that, that might be something that you need to take into consideration. But the thing about the Pixelator, too, is that it's really inexpensive. It's 39 pounds. That translates to about 53 US dollars. So this is a really inexpensive solution, and you might already have all the hardware that you need to get started. You likely have a digital camera. You probably have a smartphone. If you don't have a light table, they're under $30 on Amazon, and copy stands decent copy stands are under $70 or like I said you might already have a tripod. We had some problems with the injection molding process anybody who 
you know, has gone through injection molding will tell you the same. It's never, never simple. It wasn't simple. There were some mistakes made quite early on, um, which were quite frustrating to say the least. But um, two years later, we have an injection molded product that um, I'm happy with, pretty much happy with. I, I constantly look at it and wish I could improve it, but you know, sure. I think that's just natural. So you'd mentioned that you always look at this product and you always want to improve it. And you recently, you recently did. You recently yes. made a revision to or, or an update, yes. whatever you might call it, to it. So can you tell us about that? So there was three updates to the product. There was three sort of changes to the product. The diffuser that slots into the back, there are little legs that slot into the diffuser. Right. The, the legs, because of the nature of um, plas the plastic that they're so made You're talking of, about this thing here. Yeah, yeah. So this, those, and this is the revised, the newly revised version that I just yeah. got. So those, those little slots where the legs slot into. Uh, right there. Uh, that's it, yeah. So on the first version of the diffuser, the hole that the leg slots into was slightly offset. So the leg would fit tighter, I which see. I thought was a very clever idea, but <laughs> apparently it wasn't a clever idea because loads of people got in touch with me to say the legs don't fit. You just had to push them in harder. And the fact you had to push them in harder was why I designed that a slight offset. Right. But actually what we worked out in the end was rather than offset it slightly, we just moved it slightly. And I think we moved, we made the hole slightly smaller. So we've still got a solid friction of the leg when it slots in. I see. Um, the the next one was um there was on the original version there was the, there was a very very slight curvature to to the frame so the black plastic part you can see is very very slightly curved mm -hmm. now on the original version it was even more curved but uh, and this was oh, i mean so that's in, that's intentional that's just not no no it was it, it wasn't intentional it was a it was oh, a okay when the plastic goes into the machine, into the ejection molding machine, yeah, if it's not cooled quick, uh, if it's not cooled for long enough in the machine, when that part pops out, it warps. So it, it'll warp just because yeah, of like, the, okay. Yeah. But when we started testing it, we found that although that warp was there, it made absolutely zero difference to the flatness of the film, which might sound mad. It, 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 the amount that it held the, flat, the film flat or, or, or didn't, as the case may be, had no difference on the on the quality of the outcome or very dif di very little difference on the quality of the outcome so it might have not been that that curve might have held it slightly less flat but in my testing as long as i was shooting at f8 to f11 i couldn't see that difference in sharpness so in, sure. in, in so what i hadn't taken into account was that when people were getting the product they would look at it and go well that's bent it doesn't work before testing it, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're looking at it and go, it's bent, it doesn't work. And I say, well, have you tried it? No, we'll try it. And they say, oh yeah, no, it works. <laughs> so, <laughs> but of course, first impressions are quite a big thing. So when people are seeing it and think and seeing that it was bent, it was that initial disappointment. So we went back and we, we, we tinkered with the injection molding machine and we, when it popped out, it was less, less curved. The third update was something that I just regret so much not keep, we're not putting in the box from day one the little rubber feet that stick onto the back of the diffuser in the four corners. Right. Um, the original design, the original laser cut acrylic design had rubber feet. For some reason or other, when we redesigned it, we thought, well, we, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't need feet, so we won't include them. A number of people messaged saying, oh, when I'm using it, I'm finding it slipping around on the surface a bit. <laughs> of course. Like, of course it is, yeah, because it hasn't got rubber feet on the bottom anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I might never noticed it just i'd never thought about it it never even occurred to me yeah so, so yeah we, we just started including in including these rubber feet there's a lot of great products that have since come to market since hamish gill brought the pixelator to the market the team at negative supply are doing amazing stuff ethan moses over at Cam camera dactyl has a film an automated film carrier that he successfully funded on kickstarter recently so the market is really ripe for devices like these but that said, I'm, you know, I'm supporting the competing products. The, the guy, there's a guy who's just brought one to market. I think it's a fantastic product. So I've been promoting it through the website. I've been promoting it on the Pixelator, yeah, Facebook user group. Um, and yeah, it's on Kickstarter at the moment. It's called Valoi. Valo yeah, I yeah. And I just, I just saw that yesterday through one of your tweets. Yes. I don't think, yeah. I, I don't think I would have learned about it had it not been for, for your, well, your tweet. 
it, it's a great product. It just looks like a really good product. And I, I'm, I've been, um, the chap that's, that's bringing it to market, me and him have been talking about it for probably six months. I think he's, he said himself that he doesn't think he would have done it without my encouragement. So we had come to market we had negative supply right. with all of the kit which is you know just a whole other level extremely good quality stuff there's the sun box which i can't remember the it's a chinese one i think mm -hmm. it's the um a skier sky a skier i think it is Sunbox. it's called right uh, and then there's another one from another chap in the uk and yeah, a couple of others. And even since then, you know, in the last kind of six months, we've had another couple come to market. So yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool that there's more, um, sure. more products like it coming to market. It proves that there is a marketplace. It proves that there is, you know, there is growth and all of this stuff, which is what we all want ultimately, isn't it? So Hamish, I really, uh, I really appreciate you joining me today to talk about this thing. And um, we've got, uh, we've got a pixelator or we've got pixelators to to give away so we've got more than one to give away so hamish yep. was uh generous enough to uh to hook me up with some pixelators and some other goodies like these pins that i helped him out with and also i'm going to be throwing in some other stuff with this giveaway as well so um we're going to work out the details of that giveaway the details to that giveaway will be in a link below and hamish i really appreciate you uh talking to me about this thing and and congratulations on this product I, I one of the things that struck me about the box printed on the box is that it was a hundred percent funded on kickstarter in less than three hours yes. so i mean if that's if that's not impressive i i don't know what is man so congratulations i'm really happy for you i know it was kind of a bumpy road to get from idea all the way to market because i had followed that process but uh but um congratulations man and thank you for talking to me today uh, thank you for having me it's good thank you cheers mate right. cool and there's a lot of great products that have since come to market the there's a lot of great products that have since come to market the one day the one day i choose to come in here to